Women live in a world of pain. They have pain built into them, varying from menstruation to childbirth. So you see, women are born with pain, but the suffering doesn't end there. The societal oppression that they have to face every day can be even more excruciating than the physical pain they feel. Women have had to fight for their right to live since the beginning. There have always been men, constantly harassing them and shoving their beliefs and ideals down female throats. Men have always been intimidated by women, so they press them to make themselves feel more secure. This oppression doesn't just stop at rights, but stems all the way to everyday routines. There isn't a day that goes by where women don't revolve their routines around the thoughts and choices of men. From rights to routines to media, everything stems from male ideals. For some reason, men have chosen to dominate our society and put women below them. The results of male supremacy have had detrimental effects on the well-being of women. This toxic concept has resulted in the destructive diminishment of female rights. Gender inequality has been prominent for centuries. Women have had to fight for the right to vote and earn equal wages. For many years, women were denied the right to vote. From provincial to federal elections, they were not allowed to have any say. That law changed during the First World War when Canada passed the Wartime Elections Act. The act stated that female relatives of soldiers and women in the military could vote. By the end of the war, women were not willing to give away this new improvement, so in 1918, all white women were given the right to vote in federal elections. While this was a huge improvement in gender equality in Canada, it dismissed the lives of many minority groups, including indigenous women, who were only given the right to vote in the 1960s. Women have never been given the opportunity of equal pay to men. Even if they have the exact same job requirements, many women are still paid less. Although there have been improvements in equal pay, in 2022, women still earn 17% less than men on average. Although this is a serious dilemma, there is a reason for this. Many women may choose lower paying jobs in order to take more time off to take care of kids. There is also the fear of workplace harassment and higher paying occupations. In the early 1970s, a Texan woman fell pregnant of wedlock and filed a suit to trial Texas abortion laws. She didn't want to carry it a full term, but the current laws were too vague for doctors to follow without getting legally apprehended. At the time, it was illegal to perform or get an abortion, with the only compromise being to save the mother's life. After a grueling case, the court agreed to compromise current regulations on abortion. They allowed less demanding rules having to be followed. This case then blew up in the media and many states followed in changing their abortion laws. With this legal case being decades old, you would think that everything had already been resolved, but that is not the case. On June 24, 2022, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. This overturning then allowed for U.S. states to individually decide their mandates on abortion rights. Many states have already banned abortion or limited access. This new turn in recent months has tragically compromised millions of lives. Many women of U.S. citizenship have had to cross state lines to get a legal abortion. The ones who can't travel have taken to illegal surgeries and methods which are extremely dangerous. The terms of abortion for many states have even dismissed rape or incest as exceptions for abortion. Only weeks after the overturning, a 10-year-old girl in Ohio was denied an abortion. She had been abused, but rape was not an exception in Ohio state laws. She had to go to another state to get the procedure, as the law banned abortion after six weeks of pregnancy and she was over by three days. So you see, women have always been controlled. The rights in which they live by have never been up to them. Men have taken away their voices, their bodies, and their feelings. Over the past few decades, the media has played a big role in stereotypes and standards surrounding women. While social media is very important in the growth of our society, it is also very harmful to certain groups, one of which being women. In recent years, I have noticed a strange pattern in the standards that men hold women to. They ask for a woman with no body hair, a short stature, obedient, and an innocent personality. To me, all of these qualities are describing a child. Lana Del Rey describes this very well in her song, Put Me in a Movie. This line expresses the strange and pedo-like qualities that men want to find in a woman. Many men that ask for these qualities are older men. It is not uncommon for older men to look for younger women. They want someone who is new to adulthood, who they can easily corrupt. Taylor Swift brings up this issue in her song, All Too Well, Tent Men and Version, Taylor's Version. She also brings this issue up in her song, Would've, Could've, Should've. In 
and all too well, she is singing about her ex-boyfriend Jake Gyllenhaal, who she dated when he was 28 and she was 19. She explains that while she is getting older, the women that he continues to date are of the same age that she was when they were together. Jake Gyllenhaal is currently 42 years old, whereas his girlfriend Jane Godot is 25. In Would Have, Could Have, Should Have, she is singing about her ex-boyfriend John Mayer, who she dated when she was 19 and he was 32. She's explaining that she was so young in the relationship and that she feels as if he took away her innocence and her girlhood. The whole song is about her regretting the relationship that she had with Mayer even years later and saying that she wishes that she could go back in time and stop it from happening. Taylor Swift is only one example of a woman who was used very young by an older man to play out his sick fantasies. Women's bodies are constantly being objectified. Many companies use female bodies as advertisements. One example of this occurrence is Hooters. Hooters is a major corporation that has their female servers wearing extremely re revealing clothing at all times. It is also extremely popular and many people go there, including older men. The workers are checked to see if their appearances are up to par on a regular basis within their shifts. The name of the company is even another word for breasts, as well as the logo being a character of them. Hooters is a company that is all about making money off of women's bodies. This is just one example of women being pawned off for profit. Men have used social media to control women. They put out information regarding how they think women should be for millions of people to see. Women see these posts and associate them with how to have a successful life. They assume that they need to do these things and live up to these standards to be happy. Men have corrupted this society with thoughts of insignificance and feelings of failure. Through the media, they have found ways to influence women into fitting into the mold that they have made for them. They want obedient women to do their bidding and have accomplished that by making women feel worthless without the praise of men. Harassment is a staple in female lives. Everywhere women go, they are harassed in one way or another. Whether it be speech or touch, men seem to not have the ability to keep to themselves. Catcalling happens everywhere, in the mall, on the street, basically anywhere. It is a phenomenon where men yell out inappropriate phrases at women without their consent. The alarming fact about catcallers is that they don't do it because they expect women to reciprocate the act. They do it to discomfort and fortify their dominance. It's them saying, I can say whatever I want and you can't do anything about it. Responding to catcallers can be very dangerous as they could turn and harm you at any time. Even ignoring catcallers could result in dire consequences. In 2016, Janice Jackson Talton was fatally shot in the chest by a man that followed her after she ignored his advances. So you see, catcalling has never been a compliment and is always a threat. Harassment towards women isn't necessarily always so blatant. Even little comments that at first listen you wouldn't see the harm in them have underlying meanings. The term female can even be seen as a derogatory term. Men may use it in a sense that undermines a woman and traps her in her sex, stripping every other trait of her being. Andrea Longchu explains this occurrence quite well in her book Females. She writes, As far back as the 14th century, the word female was used to refer to women with particular emphasis on their childbearing capacity, but it arguably did not acquire the technical sense of a human mammal of the female sex. Until the rise of the biological disciplines in the 19th century, in the United States, the man known as the father of gynecology, J. Marion Sims, built the field in antebellum south, operating on enslaved women in his backyard, often without anesthesia or, of course, consent. As C. Riley Snorton has recently documented, the disti distinction between biological females and women as a social category, far from neutral scientific observation, developed precisely in order for the captive black woman to be recognized as female. Making Sims' research applicable to his women patients in polite white society without being granted the status of social and legal personhood. Sex was produced, in other words, precisely at the juncture where gender was denied. In this sense, a female has always been less than a person. 
two AL 2019 females verso books. In a study conducted in 2021 by UN Women UK, 97% of women aged 18 to 24 have experienced sexual harassment in public spaces and more than 70% of women of all ages have endured such behavior. A quote by Rachel Thompson, Mashable. Women of all different backgrounds all over the world get harassed every day. It is a problem that has been going on for a millennia. Since the beginning of time, men have prodded and poked at the integrity of women to try to get them to crack and bend towards their desires. Has being a woman in this society ever felt like a burden? Yes, I think sometimes it, it does or has. Um, I think a lot of women carry around guilt at times. The need to have to balance and manage everything in their lives, work, children, relationships, family. And they can't always find that perfect balance. And sometimes something doesn't get all the attention it needs. So there's a lot of guilt. When do you think you first became aware of female oppression? I think I was probably around 8 to 10 years old. My mom would tell me stories about being young and married in the early 60s and what was expected from women who were housewives. Have you ever experienced unwanted or inappropriate attention from male peers as a young woman? Uh, yes, um, many times. Um, but one in particular, I was in my early 20s and I was hired um, at a job. I was a clothing manufacturer and I was in the accounting department. The owners were two males and I'd say three quarters of the office staff were men. Within the first two to four weeks I was there, I would get comments on my looks. Some were inappropriate. I also had a co-worker that was married um, hit on me and asked me out. Do you remember your first experience with catcalling? And if so, what was it? I think I was probably about 15. I had my first job in retail at Metrotown Mall. I would take the bus from Vancouver to Burnaby. Sometimes when I would be standing at the bus stop waiting, I would get honks and men would whistle and they would call out at me when they were stopped at a red light. What do you think of the recent overturning of Roe v. Wade in the U.S.? Oh my gosh, where do I start with that? When I heard that it was overturned, I immediately was grateful that my two daughters were born and live in Canada. I cried for all the women and girls in the United States, having been told that the decision about their bodies was no longer their right to make. I feel worried and sick for all the women and girls across the world. If this right could be taken away, what's next? Yeah, I mean, like 13 states have already banned abortion or limited so much access. Even rape and incest has been not, has been like not seen as compromises for abortion too like just like weeks after the overturning that 10 year old girl came out and she you know she was pregnant and she had been abused but she lived in ohio and in ohio you have to be six weeks um six weeks is the, the maximum for a pregnancy she was only three days overdue but she still had to cross state lines to get the abortion she needed and i think it's ridiculous that ohio didn't make an exception i mean these women need the health care that they're being denied what do you think are some of the most harmful female stereotypes um i can think of a few um if they're dressed a certain way in a skirt heels maybe a short crop top that they're looking for and they welcome attention and advances Another one would be that they should automatically know how to be good at cooking and cleaning. And um, that they should automatically want to have children. Mm -hmm. That's another thing for the Roe v. Wade is that a lot of these Republicans want just, they just want to control women's bodies to make more children too. Like they just, they, they don't care about the women. And also the, the, the children that are being born um, without 
like you know want to be born are just going to be going into the foster care system too and we all know the foster care system right now is in ruins i mean there's so many children there in places that are unfit for them and it's just horrible that you know they they care about the fetus but they don't care anything at all about them once they're outside what do you think one of the first steps we should take in overturning and overcoming gender inequality in today's society should be um i think the big ones should be paying women the same amount they would a man for doing the same job Mm -hmm. that's really big i mean in 2022 women are paid 17% less on average than men. I mean, and a lot of those things is because, like, one of the reasons is because women take lower-paying jobs in order to take more time off to take care of kids and elderly people. And also because they're afraid of workplace harassment and higher occupations and higher-paying occupations, which you mentioned before was something that you went through, which is, like, I mean, proof that this is a prominent issue in our society that needs to be looked at, and it, it can't it can't be not dealt with any longer. Women struggle every day, from societal oppression to everyday life. They are constantly fighting a battle. In society, women have to fight for their rights to live. Rights have been given and taken back away over and over again. They have to face injustices within their everyday routines as well. Street harassment is a part of everyday life for a woman. Going online to try to escape reality isn't even a safe place for women. Men have used the media as a way to spread toxic masculinity and information. For example, Andrew Tate. Through men like him, demeaning women has become the norm. His whole platform is directed at young boys that can look up to him as a mentor. He's teaching them to be abusive and degrading. Men like him try so hard to convince themselves that women don't matter. They think they can dismiss all that women have done for society and give all the credit to the men. For centuries, men have seen women as below them without any logical reason as to why. Female suffrage is never ending. Women cannot catch a break from harassment and prejudice.